Come to our Sunday morning service. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week. Thank you, Jesus, that we could be found in your presence this morning. Father, I pray for your people who are going through any hardships and any suffering and any uh, problems with their health. Heal them and bless them, mighty God. I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy that carries us every day. You are our Lord and our God in whom we put our faith and our trust in, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. As we continue, bless us, mighty God. Amen. Family, I want to speak to you this morning about the offering. And I'm reading from Genesis 26, 1 verse 12. There was a famine in the land, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Family, the Lord has a passion to bless us financially, both for our own personal benefit and particularly for us to be able to produce greater works for his kingdom purposes. Let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, according to Psalms 35 verse 27. The global economy is shaking. There is a financial famine throughout the world and people are living in fear. Many, including the Christians, are losing their jobs, cars and even their homes. And their savings are evaporating. Homes are losing their value. Many Christians, just to save money, uh, to pay their debts, are reducing their giving to God. And some regular tithers are being late or no longer tithing at all. According to our natural way of thinking, this would appear to be wise, but is it really wise to cut out our giving in a time like this? I want to encourage you this morning, when we look to God as our source, when we make our tithes and offerings as a seed, as an act of faith in Him, He would not fail to send the miracle harvest in both expected and unexpected ways. And I can boldly say this has worked for me. I did not receive an increase in my salary in March this year, and I, but I increased my tithing anyway in faith that God is my source, and let me tell you that God has blessed me far above and beyond what any employer can do. When everyone else was complaining about salary cuts and job losses during the lockdown, God continued to increase me financially. The lockdown did not affect us at all. We live in a continual state of giving and receiving. And no matter what disasters come, I will not stop my giving. It is my lifeline. Look at the widow. Uh, what the widow of Zephyrus said to Elijah. As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but only a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. This is 1 Kings 17.12. Through the anointed request of the prophet Elijah, the widow obediently gave her last meal to Elijah. God then multiplied the seed offering, and she and her son had enough food until the drought was over. She sowed in a time of famine and it saved her life and that of her son. God will do it for every one of us. Seek the Lord for his plan of giving and how, how much to sow and where to sow. And do not just give casually like you're paying a debt. No, worship God with your tithes and offerings. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Family, in closing, I want to say this. If you feel you cannot afford to tithe, let me tell you something. As an act of faith, take an empty tithe envelope and hold it up to heaven and ask the Lord to bless that envelope and to bless you with a job or an income so that you can also be a tither. It's, do what, you may not have money, but you have faith. Use your faith and, uh, God, and receive from God today. I, I tithe with joy and I love it and it's all I can give to God. And I do it with love and He keeps increasing me and my family. Let me just give you a small testimony. Over the past few months, I have been battling with asthma and allergies. Um, I've been struggling to breathe. And uh, on Sunday, I woke up with uh, a heavy allergy on my face and throughout my body, and my face was double its size. Then I remembered my tithing rights that God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, I claimed my tithing rights that the devourer has been rebuked for my sake. And I stood on that word until healing manifested in my body. The devourer has been rebuked by God for our sake in every area of our lives, including our health. All we have to do is enforce it. So when the devil comes and tries to steal anything in your life, you enforce your rights and shout, you are not taking my healing, you are not taking my children or my finances away from me. I am a tither. Satan, you have been rebuked. Healing belongs to me. The windows of heaven are open to me and I receive it. Don't ever settle for second best. Don't settle for financial setback on your, or your possessions breaking. Don't settle for attacks on your family. You are a tither and you have rights. 
Now more than ever, I understand what my Thai does for me. It goes way beyond the financial realm. That is why the devil will try to stop you from tithing because he knows the power of the tithe. Don't let him fool you. Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Family, I pray that you've been blessed by this word. I hope that you've been encouraged as well. Now please get out your pen, notebook and your Bible and let's get ready to hear the word of God from our man of God, Pastor Ricardo. God bless you all. Church, today I will be reading Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Mm -hmm. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Mm -hmm. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Mm -hmm. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. Mm -hmm. I will not pour out their reputations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made me my, my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant, pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. inheritance. I will praise. praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart Instructs. instructs me i have set the lord always before me because he is my right hand i shall not be shaken mm -hmm. therefore my heart is glad my tongue rejoices, rejoices. Mm -hmm. my body also will rest secure, secure because you will not abandon. abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. decay. You have made, you, you have made known. known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much, Brother Caleb and Sister Jayshree for opening this morning. And uh, we want to give a very warm welcome to all of you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for opening the doors of your home and inviting us into your home as you participate with us this morning. Good morning, dearly beloved. We thank God. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. You are so special and just know that we are continually praying for you. We love you and we thank God for you. Most of all, we give God the glory because without Hallelujah. him, this would never be possible. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I'd like you to go with me to the book of Colossians, chapter number 3. And uh, I think last week we spoke about love, walking in love, how faith works through love. And we want to expound a little bit more on that this morning. And we're going to pick up in the book of Colossians, chapter 3. Now, before we go into the Word of God, let us just pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning for yet another opportunity, O oh God, to share and to hear your word. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Lord God, as we 
would read your word, as we would share your word. I pray that revelation will come. I pray that understanding and enlightenment will come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to whom belongs the praise, glory, and honor, both now and forevermore. I pray, Lord God, that you'll anoint our vocal cords as we read your word and share your word with your people this morning. In Jesus' blessed name and all the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God once again. It's good to um, share with you this morning. And we are really looking forward to being back in church pretty soon. Where we can all come together again and once again have fellowship. But we thank God also for the opportunity He's made available unto us to share, still continue the work of preaching the Word of God. Amen. So we just thank God that the work can still continue in spite of circumstances and in spite of what's happening around us. Now Colossians chapter 3, I shared with you last week, we, we rather shared with you about love, walking in love. Now in Colossians 3 and verse number 12, I want to pick up from there, um, the Apostle Paul writes to us and he says, So chosen by God, I'm reading from the message translation. He says, so chosen by God for this new life of love. Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. I like that. I like that. Number one, you are chosen by God. You are elected by God. It was, it was not by mistake and it was not by man's doing, but it was God's choice. So you are a God choice. You are chosen of God for what? For this new life of love. God demonstrated his love towards us. In that whilst we were still sinners. Christ died for us. So God's love met the conditions for us. It, it was, it's an unconditional love. So here's the thing. Is that God has brought us into this new life of love. And that is the beauty of this life that we have received in Christ Jesus. Is that um, it's a life where we experience and not just know but we actually experience the love of God and we're able to share that love with others and this is what Paul says chosen by God for this new life of love dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you wow so God has a special wardrobe for you and I and God has picked out this wardrobe and he says this is the wardrobe that God has picked out for you Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even temp tempered, content with second place. That's what we shared last week. Love always puts others first, puts God first, puts others first. Content with second place. Quick to forgive an offense. Quick to forgive. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you and regardless of what else you put on wear love it's your basic all-purpose garment never be without it never be bound without love because love there's great power in love and once you can walk in love and you can clothe yourself in love you find now it becomes easier for you to function in this life and he goes on to say, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not about us doing our own thing. It's not about us doing as we please. It's about doing what God wills for us to do. It's about us pleasing God rather than pleasing ourselves. And cultivate thankfulness. Now, I want you to underline this. He says, let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. It means let the word of God have first place. The King James says this. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, that's all I want to touch on this morning. Let the word of Christ dwell. Dwell in you richly. The message goes on to say, Give the word of Christ plenty of room in your lives. Instruct 
and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's really amazing and it's awesome that God, you know, and the Apostle Paul had this revelation that the word of Christ should dwell in us richly. Why? It's because Jesus said in John's Gospel, in chapter 15, he said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. So it's all about abiding in him. Allowing the word to abide in us because a man is actually the sum total of his word. You are the sum total of your words. Whatever words you've been speaking all along is what you are actually experiencing now. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hence, it is so important for us to watch our talk. Our talk should be a talk of love. Amen. It should be a talk of love. Watch your words. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, Jesus says in verse 37, He says, By your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. In other words, your words enforce the contract of spiritual law. Everything that we see around us, everything that happened around us, it all came to be by the word of God. Hebrews 11 verse 3 tells us, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed through the word of God, so that nothing we see was made of something seen, but was made of the invisible. So if you want to change your life this morning, and you want to bring about change, and you're not happy with what you see in your life this morning, you can change it purely by the word of God. The Bible says the word of God lives and abides forever mm -hmm. hallelujah and that's the beauty of it so in spite of the circumstances that you are going through or facing in spite of uh, uh, um, in spite of the challenges the word of god lives and abides forever so all those challenges they listen friends they are not there forever i love what david says in the book of psalms hallelujah yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death so he walks through a valley of a shadow. So it is nothing that is real. It is nothing that is real. Amen. The Bible um, encourages us to look not at the things that we can see, but at the things that are unseen. Because the things which are seen are temporal. They're subject to change. But that which is unseen is eternal. And that's the word of God. The word of God calls us children of promise. And that's my word to you this morning, is that you are a child of promise. And what is the promise? The promise is the word. The word. You are a product of this word. Everything that this word says about you, you truly are. Everything this word says you can do, you truly can do. Whatever the word says you can accomplish and achieve, you can accomplish and you can achieve it. Hallelujah. Paul is telling us now to clothe ourselves with this wardrobe of God's love. God picked out this wardrobe for us. And friends, there are so many portions of scripture, of things that God has made available unto us. You know, I love it when, when Jesus says, seek and you will find. Ask and you shall be given. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. What he's saying is, seek for the promise. Look for the word. You'll find it. Look for the answer in the word. You'll find it. Hallelujah. Ask. What do you ask? You ask in accordance with the word of God. Amen. You need to pray the word. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Mm -hmm. So it's about abiding in him and his words abiding in us. So when his words are abiding in us, that's where we get to the point that the Apostle Paul was speaking about letting the words of Christ dwell in us richly. Because once we do that, now we can speak word. And when you speak word, you're not just speaking ordinary words. 
You know, I've heard many people speak about, yeah, you must speak positive and pos positive confession. Listen, if it's not the word, it will not work. That's the bottom line. If it's not the word of God, it will not work. You must speak the word of God. When you speak the word of God, you're speaking the power of God into that circumstance. Hallelujah. You know, when uh, Jesus uh, said to his disciples, he says, The words that I speak to you, I speak not by my own authority, but the Father in me does the works. So Jesus knew that when he speaks, mm. he's speaking the Father into the situation. Hallelujah. He's speaking the Father into the situation. Praise God. In John 6, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. In the account of the woman at the well, Jesus says the Father is spirit. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then Paul tells us in Corinthians that the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God connects with you and I through our Spirit. We connect with God through our Spirit. And through that connection now, when you speak, the words you speak, you are speaking actually Christ into your situation. You're speaking Jesus into your situation. Consider this, the, apostle, the, the prophet got to the woman at Zarephath. And when he got there, she only had um, a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil and she was ready for a burial. I mean, that was a last. And he gives her word. <laughs> Praise God. He gives her a word. Now, that wasn't just word. That was word that was coupled with faith, but more so anointed. That word was covered. It was encapsulated. By the Spirit of God. That when he released that word and he said to her, Go and make something for me to eat first and bring it to me. For thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Your flour and your oil will not cease. Mm. And the woman goes and she, she obeys, she responds to the word. Mm. And just in responding, the Bible says, She and her household, mm. um, the oil and the flour, did not run out, it never ceased, in accordance with the word, watch this, in accordance with the word of the Lord, spoken by the mouth of the man of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now you are a child of God. And Jesus, watch this, here's another example. Jesus speaks to the fig tree in Mark's gospel, chapter number 11. He gets, he sees the fig tree and there's leaves on it and he comes to it and he desires to eat some fruit from it. But when he looks at it, he sees nothing. So he looks at the fig tree. He doesn't just take it. And that's the problem, Pastor Sharon. Many people, um, you know, sometimes you can get so comfortable with the yeah. way things are in your life that you think, okay, you know, this is, this, this is fine. This is, you know, this is normal. No, that is not normal. Mm. That is not normal. When Jesus saw that this fig tree had no fruit, Jesus did not accept it. You need to get to a point where you say, I refuse to accept this. I refuse to accept it and I'm going to change it. I'm going to do something about it. So what does Jesus do? Jesus curses the fig tree. And how does he curse it? He speaks words to it. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the son of God. He speaks words to that fig tree and he tells it let nobody ever eat of your fruit ever again the bible says the very next day when they were walking back past that way the disciples of jesus looked and they saw the tree withered up by the roots it dried up by the roots so the word of god will go to the root of the problem in second kings chapter 2 we find elisha the prophet takes a bowl of salt goes to the source of the water because they were in a city that was pleasant to live in, it looked, it, it looked good, it looked okay, but you couldn't drink the water from it. The entire land was barren, it was unproductive. So they come to Elisha the prophet and they say, but look at the city. So El Elisha says, bring me a bowl, put some salt in it. He takes it and he goes and puts it at the source of the water. And the Bible says, from that day to this very day, that water is cleansed. Now that water that 
you know, cause that miracle. It's the word of God. So this is what God is saying. I believe this is what God is saying in this hour. Is that bring me somebody. Bring me a heart that is willing mm -hmm. to receive my words. To receive my instruction. To lay up my word on the inside of them. That will speak my word. And the word of God will go to the root of the problem. To go to the very source of the problem. And the word of God will bring about change. Hallelujah. Praise God. Another account I want to share with you is found in the book of Ezekiel. And that's where I'm going to close this morning. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So there's power in words. And I believe God puts a great emphasis on words, the words we speak. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, 37, by your words you'll be condemned and by your words you'll be justified. So that's a spiritual law. And in uh, Ezekiel 37, the Spirit of the Lord God comes upon Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And from verse 1, he says this, I'm reading from the message. God grabbed me. God's Spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bleached by the sun. It's probably your life. Everything that's happened to you has caused you to be dried up. You're probably as dry as a bone. It has brought you, excuse me, it has brought you to, your, to the bone. And because of the fires of life, you probably feel that you've been burned out. But there's a reviving that's coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And verse 3, he said to me, God says to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Now God says to you this morning, can you live? Can these bones live? God says to you, is there anything too difficult for me? Ezekiel answers. He said, I said, master God, only you know that. Now there are many folk that are like that. You know, they go through challenges and they go through things in life. And all they say is, ah, God knows. God knows. God knows. I believe God doesn't want to keep you in limbo. God doesn't want to keep you in a place where you don't know whether you're coming or going. No. God speaks to you plainly and openly. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants you to know. That's why He's given you His Word. So when you read His Word, meditate on His Word, abide in His Word, it becomes known to you what is the will of God. The will of God is revealed to us in His Word. So enough with the God knows. Hallelujah. He said, Master God, only you know that. And God said to him, prophesy over these bones. You see that God is telling you this morning, yes, I know. But it's time for you to open your mouth and speak. Prophesy over these bones. Dry bones. Listen to the message of God. It's time you spoke to the bones in your life. It's time you spoke life into that marriage. It's time you spoke life into that marriage. It's time you spoke life into, into your family. It's time you spoke life into your job. It's time you spoke life into your finances. It's time you spoke life into every area of your, of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you speak life, you're speaking the word of God. That's what God wants you to do, is to speak God into your, in, into your marriage. Speak God. There are too many folk that are speaking, you know, and you can, you, you can do this homework, do this exercise. And you, you, you'll find that somebody who's always speaking sick, 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 Every time you meet them, the person is sick. Hallelujah. Or if you're speaking, you find people always, they're complaining about their marriage, complaining about their spouse, or they're complaining about finances, or they're complaining about the government, or they're complaining. Enough with the complaining. It's time we spoke the word of God. It's time we spoke the word of God. It's time we spoke Amen. and we said South Africa yeah. will live. South Africa will triumph. Yeah. South Africa will flourish. It's time we spoke words of life. That's what God wants. Life to come into this nation. Prophesy over these bones. Dry bones. Listen to the word of God. God the master told the dry bones. Watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you'll come to life. 
That's what God is saying to you this morning. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you'll come to life. I'll attach sinews to you. I'll put meat on your bones, cover you with skin and breathe life into you. You'll come alive and you'll realize that I am God. I like that. This is all God's doing. We just read in Colossians just now. How God has handpicked the wardrobe for us to clothe ourselves with. And this is what God is saying here. I'm about to do something new in your life. You that were dry and dreary. I'm about to bring uh, 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 waters to your life. I'm about to refresh you. I'm about to revive you. I'm about to strengthen you. I'm about to heal you, says the Lord. And Ezekiel says, I prophesied just as I'd been commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound and oh, rustling. The bones moved and came together, bone to bone. I kept watching. I kept watching. You got to keep watch. When you start speaking the word of God, don't look at anything else. Watch the word come to pass. Watch the fulfillment of the word of God. When you begin to speak how God wants you to speak, yes, times will get tougher. Yes, the heat will get hotter, but you don't stop. You don't stop talking. You don't stop knocking. You don't stop seeking. Hallelujah. You don't stop asking and praying. You got to keep on pressing on. Hallelujah. Because something happens when you start doing that and everything seems like it's going off course or imbalanced in your life. That is just an indication that there's things that are happening in the realm of the spirit and there's order taking place now. The bones came together. Watch it. The bones came together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, I kept watching. Sinews formed. Then muscles on the bones. Then skin stretched over them. But they had no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Tell the breath. God the Master says, come from the four winds. Come, breath. Breathe on these slain bodies. Breathe life. Praise God. You may feel like you're slain because of the things that you have been going through. It could be stuff you've gone through in your workplace. It could be in your business. It could be, you know, in your marriage. It could be in whichever shape or form you could feel like you're a slain soldier. But God says to tell you this morning that the Spirit of God is about to pick you up. The Spirit of God is about to raise you up. Hallelujah. He says, breathe life. So I prophesied just as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came alive. They stood up on their feet, a huge army. Then God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they are saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There's nothing left of us. You probably feel that way this morning, that there's nothing left for you to hold on. There's nothing left for you to look forward to. But my friend, you have the word of God to hold on to. You can hold on to the promises of his word. You are a child of promise, you hold on to the promise. You are a child of the word, you hold on to the word. You don't let go of the word. The Bible says that the crowd thronged around Jesus. He is the word. But there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. This woman said within herself, If I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made well. There comes a time, brother, there comes a time, sister, when you've got to start speaking to yourself, you've got to start speaking to your spirit, man, praise God, mm. where you've got to tell yourself who you truly are in Christ Jesus, that's what this woman done, and she said, if I touch just the hem of his garment, I shall be made well, the Bible says she pressed through the crowds, and she touched, she reached out and touched, and as she touched, immediately, immediately, there was a transformation, immediately, there was a change, it's the same with that fig tree, that Jesus cursed. It was within 24 hours. 24 hours later, that fig tree had dried up. I'm here to speak to somebody this morning that God can give you a 24-hour breakthrough. God can give you a 24-hour miracle. Hallelujah. There are accounts in scripture where God said about this time tomorrow, a seer of Bali and a come and talk to me somebody. That's what God is saying. That they 
the, the economy can shift and change. Your economic situation can change. It's not dependent on the indices on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It's not determined by the stock exchange. It's not determined by the economists. But your economic your economic power is determined by God. You belong to the economy of God. So your economic situation can turn around. Hallelujah. Things can turn around for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, verse 12, prophesy, tell them, God, the master, the Lord says, I'll dig up your graves and bring you out to life. This is resurrection power. I believe God is raising up people this morning. I believe God is taking people. It may be, you know, words. People spoke words over your life and you feel that you've been buried. You know, words of negativity. There were words of limitations that were put over you. But I'm here to tell you that you are bigger than that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. God says this. This is what God says. I'll dig up your graves and bring you out alive, oh my people. God's about to bring you out. God's about to resurrect you. Then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you'll realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you live. This is what God is saying. I'll give you my spirit. I'll give you my spirit. The prophet Joel says in the last days, and these are the last days. Yes, we have, you know, things happening around us and we can see. Yes, we are. We are living in that in that time of the last days. But what we forget is that God says in the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit on all flesh. God wants to pour out his spirit. And that's what he says. I'll put, I'll breathe my life into you and you live. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land and you'll realize that I am God. I have said it and I'll do it. God's decree. We serve a God who's a performer of his word. We serve a God who, when he says something, he's going to do it. Mm. And I believe that God is about to do the super in your natural. You'll experience it, the supernatural, because that's the God we serve. And that is what he's called you and appointed you for. Mm. It's for, is for a time of the Amen. supernatural, a class of the supernatural. And it's time, sons and daughters of the Most High God. It's time we began to speak the word of God and we speak it with boldness. You may be like Moses. Yes, you may be standing by the sea and you see the sea in front of you and you may look around you and the mountains are looming around you yeah. and the enemy is pursuing you from the back and you feel as though you are in a corner. Yes, what did God say to Moses? Moses, what's that in your hand? Mm. It's the rod. Yeah. God is saying to you, what's that in your hand? What's that in your mouth? It's the word of God. Mm. It's time you start speaking. When you speak, this is what happens when you speak the word of God over those waters, the ruach of God, the breath of God, God breathes and moves on the waters and the waters have to part. The waters have to give way so that you can go through. I believe that is what's happening in this hour. That God is taking you to the promised land. God is taking you to the other side. You're a child of promise and you belong in the promised land. Canaan is for you. Enough with Egypt. Enough with Babylon. It's time you went and moved over to Canaan. Praise God. Go for the promises this morning. Speak Speak the promises in spite of what's happening around you. Speak the promises and breathe the promises. Eat the promises. Live on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that I believe, I believe, I believe with all my heart. I believe it. That God's word is final. God's word is true. And things are going to change for you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I trust you've been blessed. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Oh, Pastor Sharon. Awesome. We serve an awesome Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That was an awesome word, Pastor. Amen. You know, I was uh, sorry to say, I was looking for something that I had um, written in my cell phone, but I didn't find it. But nonetheless, we serve a great and a mighty God. And uh, if I could uh, say that um, we are actually a product of our words. Sometimes we're sitting today and wondering how did we get into the place we are. We probably didn't speak what we were supposed to speak. Mm. Like Pastor said in John chapter 15, he said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done to you. Same if we go to John 14, verse 15. If you love me and keep... Sorry, verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, in my name I will do it. 
If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray that the Father, and he, he shall give you an, another comforter, and he may, that he may abide with you forever. So I thank God that we have his name, that Amen. we can ask anything in his name. Amen. We have been asking him at times in our lives where yeah. we just ask out of our flesh, but we forget to invite the Holy Amen. Spirit. He must do the, he must be the one that he goes to the Father and he intercedes on our behalf. So yeah. we need to communicate with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. We need to speak to him in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In that name, we will ask whatever we will, that those dry bones like you preached, will come again to life. Amen. There may be something sitting dry in our life, but the Holy Spirit, God's power can resurrect it. Amen, Amen. Pastor. Like Hallelujah. you said, there's Amen. a resurrecting power mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So whatever it may be, it may be a sickness, mm. but you know, our God Jesus. has given us the power to command that sickness to go. Many of us are sitting tied down with pains and aches, but all we have to do is bind it and release it in the name of Jesus. We need mm. to command these things to go. That's right. We should never be walking around with loads mm. and we should never lose our joy. Amen. Because that is where, when you lose your joy, how are you ever going to do what God wants you to do? Yes, so Satan right. can steal our things, but he can't steal our, our joy. joy. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Because we serve a joy God who has given us a spirit, the fruit of the spirit. Amen. One of it is joy. Amen. Thank God that he's given us his word. Amen. And when Jesus spoke, he spoke words of power. Even at the beginning, mm -hmm. he said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. He said, let there be animals. Let there be uh, uh, fruits on the tree. He spoke light, fish in the sea. At night for a light for the day and a light for the night. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So we too can speak. Creative power. We forgot That's that we right. can speak. We can just speak, but we can also mm -hmm. speak wrong. Yes. So remember, whatever you speak, yes. you may speak about that person. I've learned to stay away from that because whatever you speak to that person will come back to you. That's right. Because we speak words of life or death. Words are life and death. Right. So remember, remember to learn this. Forget that speech. Forget that. Rather speak the word of God. Speak Amen. to your husband That's words right. of power. Yes. Even our children sometimes ask God for forgiveness if you failed him mm. because we speak words of life. They are life and death. So we forget oh, that these oh. words, we wasn't created to just speak. Mm, we, mm. I've learned this, Pastor, over Jesus, time. Yes. I may have failed myself, but I've learned that words are life and death. Mm. You can speak life into somebody and you yeah. find that person blooming. Mm. But you can speak death. But remember, it can come back to you. That's right. It will come back to yeah, you. Yeah, right. Your wor Our words do not re return void. That's because right. they return with something. That's but right. what are we calling it? Mm. If you speak death, to another individual, or you speak sickness, or you speak, uh, you know, um, just bad words, they can return to they you. They come back because... Because they're always going to yeah, come that's back. Right, that's yes. why when Jesus spoke, the fish was created. Yeah. So something's going to come yeah. back. And I'm reminded when Jesus said, uh, mm -hmm. he says, you know, when you enter a home, yeah. there's a man of peace. Speak peace, peace be upon this home. If there's a man of peace, your peace will remain. Amen. If there's no man of peace, your peace will return. So it's true what you say, Pastor Shannon, because sometimes yeah. you can speak a word and it's not a word of love. God wants yeah. us to operate in love. Yeah. So you'll so you'll release words and it's not a uh, it's 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 not a love word, it's mm -hmm. not a loving thing to the, say about someone. The somebody. intention isn't yes. wrong. and you find that you know, just in speaking mm. that, that word cannot settle there. Mm. And then you find that word comes back. And then you find now you're the one that's bearing the brunt of your words. Mm. So even when it, it's, 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 it's not just about speaking for yourself, speaking but how you speak about others and speak yeah. for others. Amen. Or even in a Powerful. home. Yes. How do you speak to your spouse? Yeah, that's Are right. you building him up? Are you making him to be the man that God wants him to be? Yes. Not the, the or the child that God wants you to have. Yeah. The child that you are talking about your children now. Mm. Or the home that you want to create. Or the, or the life that you want to create is yeah. all in your tongue. That's right. So just as you said, Pastor, we can mm. speak to dry bones and those bones will live. Yes. So when what God is saying there, there may be things that you're sitting and thinking, how, how come it doesn't happen to me because you never allow the Holy Spirit when you allow him his sweet spirit changes things for you Hallelujah. you can ask him and yes. he will guide you he's that's why God gave him as, as our comforter Amen. when you ask your angels to carry you the load for you they will carry the load often we're carrying heavy loads mm. especially yes. in this day and age that's you're right. carrying loads you're yeah. carrying fear because yeah. wherever you go, you're wondering now, is this virus mm. going to attack me? Let me tell you something. It never attacks the child of God. 
it can never attack you because you, you, you it doesn't yeah. help speaking the word but when you walk in there suddenly you, you hit by fear you don't walk you in fear walk in faith you walk in faith yes i mean jesus never ever we never find an account mm -hmm. in scripture where jesus walked in fear mm -hmm. and the bible says we shall live by faith mm -hmm. And our faith is in God. Amen. That's why even when Jesus cursed the fig tree, the very first thing that he says to the disciple, when the disciple was astonished at what mm. happened to the fig tree, Jesus, in, Jesus says to him, um, have faith in God. Yeah. Four words, have faith in God. God. Have faith in God. When you have faith in God and you're walking in faith, Amen. you're walking in the power of God. And that's why mm. it becomes... Evident that when you begin to speak now, mm. you begin to speak words of power. Mm. Wow, praise God. Amen, amen. amen. Just uh, lost track. But anyway, uh, Pastor, that is so powerful because we should be now careful of every word. Not Look, you, it becomes a custom. Mm. Your words will suddenly flow with blessing. Because when you speak fear, you're in the curse. But when mm. you speak faith, you're in the blessing. That's right. You can't be in both. Because you will love one and hate the other. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. We th I thank God that we could flow in His grace and His mm. mercy Amen. and in His uh, love. Mm. And um, we serve a mighty God. Also. Amen. 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 So Amen. praise Amen. God. So that's, so that I believe is yeah. it. You know, watch your words. Uh, or you could be saying that, you know, maybe uh, you feel like, you know, your life is just fading away or your health is fading away or even you yourself is fading away because you hear from everybody else that at that particular age, you should be, you should be, you know, just losing power or losing mm. strength or vitality. But it doesn't work like that. You can yeah. speak power into your body. Jesus says with the head and not the tail. The tail he yeah. says, he says, uh, he gives us strength like the eagles. Mm. So in other words, it's yeah, the same it's like, what you say. Yes, that's a you Are you taking a, this word and speaking it to yourself and living it? That's right. You've got to get to a point where you say, yeah. enough is enough. Amen. I'm not going to accept it. Yeah. I refuse to accept it. I reject it. Amen. 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 Because what you accept is basically, that is going to be the standard. Yeah. The standard you, the standard you accept mm -hmm. is the standard you're going to get. Yeah. So you've so so you've got to raise your standard. Yeah. How you raise your standard? By the word of God. Amen. That's, Amen. That, that is our plummeting line. The word yeah. of God. Amen. We are the words that we speak. Amen. Amen. And we Praise need, God. but basically, let me say, we cannot just speak our own word. We must speak the word, the of, word God. of God. Your whole prayer can be the word of God. Oh God. You can go on your knees and wonder, what am I going to pray? But if you start praying the word of God, go that is all that you need. Yes, pray the you know, many often, Most yeah. often people may think, now what do I say? But the Holy Spirit will intercede on your behalf with groanings that... Uh, uh, and mm -hmm. we cannot understand sometimes but you know it's just this word it's the word of god if you say i am i am strong i am, i have i have faith he gives to everybody faith he gives to everybody uh, wisdom mm -hmm. if we ask of it amen. Amen. amen 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 praise god and then we will be able to discern the times that we're living in mm -hmm. what is the evil and what is good Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you praise Pastor. God. Hallelujah. And we thank well, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Well, praise Amen. God. I believe that's the word that God has for us today. Yeah. Watch our words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just as you're speaking, Pastor Sharon, about staying in the word, um, you know, we've got to walk in the spirit. Yeah, the as, Bible as never than before, walk, we need to, walk in the to spirit. stay in the spirit. Yeah, walk in the spirit Not the and flesh. live in the spirit. The flesh is because the, the flesh is basically this listening yeah. to everybody around you. And uh, conditioning your life to, to, words, to, to conditioning your life to your to your to your to your, to your surroundings yeah. and to your and to your to your environment yeah. because what happens is uh, when you when, when you become conditioned to mm. that you find that you never ever experience the power of God mm. and uh, the power is actually in the spirit because you must understand that as human beings God created us in His image and likeness. Amen. So God created and God's just intention yeah. was that we would live and function mm. just like Him Amen. because He wants to have fellowship and communion yeah. with us. And um, remember, God is spirit and man is spirit. Mm. So what the enemy tries to do is to keep us out of the spirit. Mm. And when, and when he does that, uh, it's by hearing things of the world yeah. and getting... Once you have the world in you, the world around you, when you have that world in you, then, you're not then it's very difficult yeah. for you mm. to speak words of power mm -hmm. and to live the powerful life yeah. that God has called you to. But when you have the words, mm. the W-O-R-D, living on the inside of you, 
now you're able to speak words of power because all the time. You find, yes, yeah. because now you're no more speaking the world. Amen. You're speaking the word. The word. So the more and I believe the word that, is yes, also. The word of the, God is the word. That's it. So we. And you can be walking the thicket of, of of whatever it may be. It can be a crime situ a crime area. It could be a, a mm. area where there's full of virus. The whole world has got it. But you know. You can Hallelujah. walk with him. You just know in your Hallelujah. heart because you have the word of God. Amen. Greater is he that's Praise in me God. than yes. he that's in the world. You can say it wherever Jesus, you go, then you Jesus. know. Yeah. I can walk boldly. I can come home. Amen. I mean, I'm, 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 yeah. and nothing can touch that's me. That's right. how you should talk. Amen. I'm just because you glorify God. Amen. He knows who, who, who's that's been right. glorified. You glorify the, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our function is to glorify God. We came here to serve God and to share the good news that others can be saved. We want to we want to share the this, the precious Jesus Amen. that we have with everybody. Amen. Amen. Because we never just came to earn accolades and you know all those things. Those things will last for fifteen minutes. But what do we do in the those in, the, in, the, in yeah. the next minute? We need to yeah. we need to come to realize we came for Jesus. Amen. We came to share how wonderful He Hallelujah. is. Hallelujah. You know, there's a scripture that says, uh, he who is sent by God speaks the words of God. Amen. And I believe each one of us as children of God have been sent by God to humanity to bring his love, to bring his mm. compassion, to bring his mercy, to bring his forgiveness yeah. to others. And what we are to speak is to speak what God has sent us Amen. to speak. And that's to speak his word. Amen. I mean, you were sharing now, Pastor Sharon, about living in a crime-ridden area. There are people that are watching us. Yeah, and I believe there are yeah. people, you know, there are people that connect with us that are Amen. living in um, neighborhoods yeah. that are riddled with gangsterism yeah. and crime. And there's nothing happening and the, to and the them. And little children are and there's, getting there's, involved. Yes, you know? and, but... What I'm, what I'm getting at is mm. that there are people that are living in the midst of, midst of, yes. of gangster territory yeah. and nothing happens to them but Amen. everything around them, yes. everything are the homes around yeah. them, there are things happening to them and, and, and what, what is protecting them? Mm. I believe it's the word of God. Amen. I'm reminded Amen. of that storm we had two yeah. years ago in Newcastle. We had um, hailstones yes. the, size, the size of tennis balls and... Um, it so happened that uh, uh, my vehicle was by was in for repairs, and it was by another gentleman's home, mm -hmm. and he had gone overseas, but he kept it under under shelter. Yeah. But what happened when the hailstorm took place? Uh, remember how we we took um, our youngest son and we put him in the middle of his bedroom. We actually pushed his bed to the middle of his bedroom and we began to pray. We walked mm. around the whole house whilst the storm was taking place because you could hear around you that things were breaking. Mm. And when the storm had ended, I mean, we just continued praying and we're just praying mm. Uh, mm. in the spirit, praying in tongues. And we were speaking the word mm. of God, God's protection. We're speaking the Psalms and, you know, declaring the word of God over our home that when the storm had ended, mm. All the homes around our home were all damaged. They were all damaged. And with our home, there's not even a window that was cracked. Amen. And there were homes that, you know, our, uh, we were living in a, in a tiled roof home back then. And uh, none of the tiles Amen. broke. Nothing had happened. And wow. um, uh, with, the, with the place where my vehicle was, I was worried about that. Mm. And when I went to go and look at my vehicle the next day, all the vehicles around my vehicle mm. were all damaged. Mm. Now, what is that? I believe that is the word of God. Yeah. That was a miracle. That is the glory of God. That the glory belongs to God, not me. It doesn't mean that we are any better. It doesn't mean that we are special or anything. No. What it means is that God, He is God. Mm. I mean, that's what God said to Ezekiel. And you will realize Amen. that I am God. Amen. And that is what God wants. He wants the glory in mm. all of this. He deserves the glory. It's all His. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So I just believe that we need to just encourage yeah. one another in the Word of God. And to, you, mm. you know, that we ought to speak the Word. Yeah. In spite of circumstances, mm. 
Don't speak your circumstances. Don't be speak afraid God. or shy to speak the word of God because yeah. He never fails you. Amen. Because the time when you need God, He's always there for you. He prepares the way for you. He goes before you to prepare your way. Amen. And the thing is, like we were sharing all this, you may be wondering why we're sharing about the hailstones and everything. It's when you abide in God, He protects mm. you. That's You'll right. be surprised if you had to open your eyes and you see the armies that are around you. Yeah. The, the, the angels, angels that are around you are always protected. And yes. you don't have to feel like you don't fit in because you are you are a man or a woman that serves the Lord. No, you don't need to fit in. You're in a kingdom that that that, that has so many angels and so many Protecting protection. You, you have yeah. you're in a glorious kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Praise this God. is the best kingdom to be in. It's Hallelujah. a kingdom where you worship God, where you know Amen. that no matter what is on the outside, right. you are safe. Amen. 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 Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Amen. Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Amen. For all of us. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. Well, I think we've come to the yeah. end of our program. And we trust and believe that you've been blessed this morning. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus Amen. as your personal Amen. Lord and Savior, we'd like to give you that opportunity right now to receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Because Jesus is the only way to the Father. Amen. He says, I am the way, the truth, Amen. and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through, through me. me. He is the door to the Father. So if you haven't uh, received Him as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to encourage you and invite you this morning to receive the Lord Jesus by saying the simple prayer of faith. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Amen. the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. So let us pray this morning. As we bow our heads, just say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. I confess that I am a sinner. And right now, I confess the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with all of my heart that God raised Him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I invite you to be my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for the blood that you shed for me. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. And I declare from this moment on that I'm born again. I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' blessed name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, praise God. If you say that simple prayer of faith, Connect with us, share with us the details appearing on the screen. And, um, you know, and we want to encourage you to connect, find a church, a local church, your local area that you can connect with and you can grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the repentance of one sinner, there's great joy Amen. in heaven. And right now, I believe the angels and all of heaven are rejoicing because you have now returned to the Father Amen. Connect with us. Details are appearing on the screen. Amen. And uh, whilst we in the same spirit, I'm going to ask Pastor Sharon to close in prayer and I'll release the final blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear thank you, Father. Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, O oh Father, for this morning, O oh God. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, we pray that this word would bless somebody today. The word of God Amen. is full of blessings, O oh God. Lord. Bless someone, Lord Jesus, O oh Father. I pray that they be, that their spirit be revived, O oh Father, that they feel renewed and refreshed this morning, that the healing rain of God fall on them, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. O oh Father, that person sitting on the sofa, Lord, that thinks, Lord Jesus, O oh God, it never happens for me. I'm in the same situation yesterday, but you may not see it, but... Faith yes, causes it to come. Believe in the, in the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. He will yes, bring it to pass. Whatever your situation is, He will give you that job. He will give you that marriage. He will give to you that home, that vehicle that you need. Hallelujah. He will give to you every earthly thing that you desire. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all those things shall be added to you. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. Believe His word today. His word is alive and full of blessings. The word of God never 
never goes void. It comes with something to fulfill your life. Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. will find things that will bloom in your life. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, we Jesus. thank you, Jesus, oh thank God. You, we praise you, Father, and we Hallelujah. thank you. We go on giving you glory yes, and honor. Jesus, you are the King of kings and, and the, the Lords Lord of lords. Lord. You are yes, a mighty Lord. God. We bless oh, you, Father. Yes, what would we do without you, mm. Father? Oh, thank you, Jesus, so much. We praise you. We bless you, Father. Mm. Bless each and every one of you, the viewers watching this program today I yes, cover them with your precious blood Hallelujah. I pray yes, that the Lord. angels of God surround them Camp I pray that they will have yes, faith Lord. will build up in them. them and I pray they will walk in, in faith and Jesus. they will trust in you more yes, Jesus Lord. they will spend more time with oh, you yes, more time Lord. in the word in these days that as we heard today, we are in the last hour mm. that we spend more time with God. Hallelujah. Because this God is coming back. He's coming for those that are ready. He said, two shall be together, sleeping calm and still. The one shall be taken and the one left behind. Hallelujah. Trust God. Don't wait for, for, for a day when you sit and wonder what happened. Hallelujah. Today is your day of, 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 a, of a blessing that's coming to you. And receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Amen. Amen. The grace Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, Amen. and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and your loved ones Amen. both now and forevermore. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo and Pastor Sharon saying, we love you very much. God bless you. May you have a blessed week. Until next time, keep walking by faith. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Goodbye.